How's it going everyone? This is Mike from TMP Fitness. I'm very excited for you because you have decided to change your life. Now when we come into the gym, we're gonna operate by our four basic core values, which are vision, commitment, perseverance, and hopefulness. Because what we're gonna be doing in here is we're gonna transform our bodies through informed planning and through good old fashioned hard work. Let's get it. So check it out, it's day one in the gym and we're gonna really focus on something called body recomposition throughout the entire training process, right? I mean, we're in here to get strong, but we also wanna look good and feel good, right? So the topic that we're gonna be discussing today has to do with body recomposition. Now, what body recomposition is, is it is the process of your body literally changing shape. And we're doing that by building muscle and losing fat, right? That's what most people want to do. In my experience as a personal trainer, I've heard that stated as the goal from 95% of my clients. They want to build muscle and lose fat. And that's a good goal, right? And that's going to be our primary goal. But how we approach this is going to be different for everyone. It has to do with your current body composition. Now, we have three options for the sake of this discussion. We have low body fat percentage, moderate, and high body fat percentage. We have two categories of people, right? We've got males and females. So if you are one of those people who has between 8 to 12% body fat and you're a male, then you would be considered with low body fat. For females, that range is 18 to 22%. If you have moderate body fat and you're a male, that means you have between 12 and 18% body fat. And for females, we have 22 to 28% body fat. And lastly, with the high body fat percentage males, they're gonna have anywhere from 18 to 20 plus percentage body fat. And the females are gonna have 28 to 30 plus percentage body fat. The last thing we have to focus on before we dive into our topic today is where you're at with your training experience. Now we have beginners, intermediates, advanced, and then detrained. The beginner in the gym has less than two years of training experience. So here's the good news. For beginners, you're gonna see progress quickly. I promise. And all we really have to do is follow a very basic, strategy, a very basic program, and just make sure that we're progressively overloading on a weekly basis. So what would that look like? That means we're gonna start our first push exercise maybe as a wall push up. Then we'll come down to the floor, we'll do a floor push up. And then once we master that, we'll go to the bench, we'll do some dumbbell bench press. And then once we master that, we'll go to the barbell bench press. And we're just gonna slowly add weight from a week to week basis. That's called progressive overload. For the intermediate, an intermediate is someone who has between two and five years of training experience. They're gonna see results fairly quickly, but they've already passed what we call the newbie gain stage. So they're no longer newbies and gains are a little bit harder to get. The third category is are those advanced trainees. Now advanced trainees, they're people who have been training for more than five years. Now obviously, they had to go through the beginner and the intermediate stage to become an advanced trainee. With them, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to recomp their body. But they're gonna to have to continue at it, but more than likely, they enjoy the process, right? Now the last, the last uh, category here of, of training experiences are those who are detrained. Now, this is probably gonna be more common than not in the addiction recovery program. I can share from my own experience. I started lifting weights when I was 14 years old. However, by the time I got to my very last rehab program, I hadn't lifted for two years. So what's cool about the, the detrain category is that muscles actually do have memory. Now, without getting too deep into that concept, just know that if you have trained for more than two years of your life, you developed those muscles and they have somewhat of a memory storage. You can, you can think about it almost like, a, like a, a storage drive. And when you begin to train again, your muscles are gonna remember the strength that they had and the size that they had, and they're gonna revert back. And you'll actually be able to get stronger and put on more size if that's what you wanna do. So these three factors will factor into how many calories we have to eat, right? So depending on where you are at currently with your body composition, we're gonna eat more or less calories because here, here, here's the, the secret of all secrets. If you wanna gain weight, you gotta eat more calories. 
If you want to lose weight, you got to eat less calories. If you want to maintain weight, you got to eat at what's called maintenance calories. Now, we're going to have you do your homework on a website called the TDEE calculator.net. Now, what TDEE stands for is total daily energy expenditure. Now, what that refers to is how many calories you have to eat in a day because a calorie is just a measurement of energy. There's no moral component to it. There's no good units of energy. There's no bad units of energy. However, there are units of energy, calories, that will help you achieve your goals quicker.